Hey, Ion here and welcome back to Building Libreflip. Today I will figure out, design and print some parts like the camera holder. The camera will go in here at this surface. And it, the camera will point to the glass down here. I need to figure out whether the lenses that came with the camera are suitable to mount them somewhere here and then photograph the whole surface down here. This line represents the back. With the back I mean this surface here. The surface that the camera will be mounted on. This is the back edge where the camera will be. And I want to figure out whether the plan maximum size 1A4 plus a bit on the edges actually fits and what distance I need for the best position of the camera. The technical dimension between this and that surface, this is the glass and this is what the camera will be mounted on, is uh, 315 millimeters. So let's draw that, these 315 as well. 315 millimeters. Okay, let's set this up. Camera goes right here, so there is a bit of space in between the line and the camera. This bit of space is for 3D printed stuff. And then I also want to orient the camera as best as I can on that line. And so I don't have to hold it all the time. This piece of acrylic We'll weigh it down. So this camera is far from focused and it's fixed focus. So let's put something nice there to focus on. This nicely structured piece of wood. Okay, right on the line. And now let's look through the camera. Cool. That looks really sharp. So let's see. I am really curious whether this works. And let's find out what size this page actually has. Okay, that's 3272 pixels. Let's open a calculator. We have the 297 millimeters divided by 25.4 because that's roughly an inch. Uh, so this is actually 11.69 inches. Now let's take the 3,272 pixels divided by 11.69 inches and we should arrive at the DPI which is 279 dots per inch. Let's move this closer so we get more of the picture. I have now moved the camera and now I can nail down the exact distance from the back, which will be 64. Okay. And with this distance, I already figured out the dots per inch and that's 362 DPI. I think that's more than good enough. My aim was 300 and that's way over, so we can definitely work with that. I think I have moved the camera during the last measurement. I have reorientated the camera and now I'll mark its back edge. Let's measure again. 60 sharp. I did something wrong. It's actually 60 millimeters. This is bullshit. The cameras produce an image of 4224 by 3156 pixel. That is about 13.3 megapixel. This black frame has the same size as this video, which is full HD. This is now just the part of the image inside the black frame. This image is not scaled. This means that every camera pixel is now one of your screen pixels, the true resolution of the camera. Earlier, I made a wrong distance measurement. The result of the dots per inch calculation was wrong as well. So let's calculate the DPI again. The page here has a height of 4038 pixels. 
one A4 page is 11.69 inches high. 4038 divided by 11.69 is 345 dots per inch. That is more than I needed. I aimed for 300 dots per inch. This gives me the option to move the camera away a tiny bit to reduce the small lens aberrations at the very edge of the image. The camera holder needs to be able to move the camera a bit to and from the object and I need to be able to fine adjust where exactly the camera is pointing in two dimensions. I tried to find a way with the least amount of moving parts and remembered the simple three-legged stool. By shortening all legs at the same time I can move the camera away and by changing the length of any two of the three legs I can tilt the camera in any direction. Let me show you how this goes together. This is the camera holder and this is actually from the back side and the camera module sits in here like so that the USB-C port points to one of the sides like this and it just barely fits in there I have to do this with two hands Yep, now it's in. See, it's flush here. And then there is the USB-C power and data socket. And that fits right underneath here. And is then flush here. And these holes here, this notch, that notch, that hole and that hole, they are for cable ties that go through the camera like this and the other one similarly and then from the back side they are supposed to be tightened like that so that the head of the cable tie stays at these notches This is how the heads are supposed to stick out here. Let's see how tight is this. Yeah, this is pretty sturdy. I'm happy with it. Cool, that's the camera holder, the movable part. And the base is being printed right now. I designed the height of the base around the measured 60 millimeters. This part could be much smaller if needed. This is the base for the camera mount, and these holes are for the threaded inserts. So let's insert these. That looks rather straight. That doesn't look too bad either. And that looks good as well, good enough. Let's put the screws in the camera mount. Here are some washers. And here are nuts. First a washer goes on here. Then a washer from the back side. And then at least two nuts. Haven't decided yet whether it's going to be two or three. Okay, and now another nut. And now I'll repeat this for all the other holes. Let's assemble this. So these screws go in these inserts. And with these three legs, I can fine adjust the position of the camera in two, di in two dimensions and the height. I don't yet know how much play I will have for, for this adjustment, but I'll just hope that it's enough. With these small nuts I can counter to lock it in place. And same thing with these here, I can counter with these as well to lock the top position in place. And that's how the camera mount works. Today I want to mount the camera holders over here and over there. 
So let's figure out where exactly they go. The center line of the camera holder is from here to there. And that center line is uh, supposed to be on here with a distance of 153 millimeters from that surface. So let's measure that. The USB-C plug is on that side, so this camera is going to go in like this. So it's pointing towards this direction. First is in. Very messy. I recommend to put these in like to pre-drill these holes before the suction box is assembled. Thanks for watching, and if you just made your way into the series, this is just one part of a longer series where I show all the steps to build the page journey book scanner Leberflip. In the next episode, I will be figuring out the rubber bands that act as a counterweight for the suction box here. I thought that I would mount the end stop switches and the adapters for the tube that connects to this box as well in this episode, but plans change, so I'll make it a separate episode for this task because this episode is long enough as it is.